sports analysis has come on a long way since I started around a decade ago. When I started, not many clubs had more than one analyst and some didn't even have that. Nowadays, with the advancement of technology and abundance of data, there seem to be a plenty more roles to go around. In this video, I'm going to be highlighting some of the different types of analysis roles that I've seen advertised recently um, and speak about what they actually entail and what responsibilities um, you'll be expected to do in those particular positions. If you are currently working in a club, you'll probably find yourself doing little bits of a number of things that I'm going to mention, but you know it is possible to niche down into just one or two of these. You know, as clubs are expanding their departments, as they look to kind of squeeze as much as they can out of the analysis, then these jobs are available in certain clubs. I think this video will be really useful to students actually that are currently studying and they may, you know, they might have decided that they want to work with an analysis, but they're just not sure about the types of opportunities that are actually out there. So hopefully I will give a bit of an overview of that and hopefully it will be helpful. Before I get started, please do subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss any of my future videos on sports analysis and employment. Okay, so I'm going to start with the role of first team analyst. So this is the main job and this is basically the one that existed when I, when I started out. This role would usually consist of one person doing, as I mentioned, little bits of each different kind of category of analysis, simply because there's only so many hours in the day and they've only got one pair of hands. However, I would say within this position, I think the majority of time in most clubs is spent looking at the opposition. So as you get to the first team level, we've spoken about in other videos, you know, it's mainly about winning. Obviously, that's the, the main aim of the game. So if you can optimize your chances of winning by, again, looking at the opposition, then a lot of time is spent around doing just that. Other areas probably do get a little bit neglected simply due to the lack of time. So the opposition is seen a lot of the times as the main aspect, you know, the main focus of the week. Uh, so they'll be watched, a presentation will be created, but then there will be little other th you know, things to do throughout the week, such as um, a little bit of post-match analysis, database and profiling, stuff like that, and obviously delivering the presentation. So that is the role of the first team analyst, a bit of a generic one to start. So let's get into the other roles that are available. So this leads me nicely onto the role of the opposition analyst. So obviously we've just spoke about that in the role of the first team, but this is where the club hires you solely for the job of an opposition analyst. So a lot of the times, or sometimes, you might not even be going to your team's games. Um, your focus is on understanding all the other clubs in your league. So when you do come up against them, you know, you're best prepared to actually win that particular game. Your concern would be how your team can beat the other team. So you'd be looking at their danger men. You know, what are their trends? What do they tend to do in possession? What do they do out of possession? How do they, you know, how do they work with set plays, for example? So like I say, solely focused on the other team. All teams are different depending on manpower, but uh, you know, a lot of the times, or a lot of analysts I've spoke to tend to try and watch at least three of the opposition games before they will play them. This could be more and it could be less, and you might want to tailor this, so you might want to focus more when they are playing away or when they're playing at home, or if, the, if you're playing a team which is lower in the table, maybe you're at the top, you might want to see how that team deals with teams that are expected to have a lot of possession, for example. So, you know, the games that you watch can be tailored to what you're actually looking for. This could be more and it could be less, but as you're going to be watching a lot of the opposition teams, you're going to start to notice and start to learn about each club's tendencies. Obviously, nothing in football is certain and a team can simply change the way they play, but the more you watch them, the more you understand the different changes and different systems that they can, they can use. Um, and obviously, the more you know, the better. So the next one is another role of the first team analyst that seems to have been spun off into a position of his own and that is a set piece analyst or set piece coach. So don't get me wrong, not all clubs are going to have the luxury of having this as one particular person. You know, as I mentioned, it is a job of the first team analyst to look at set plays, but there's only so much of that you can actually do, you know, all amongst the other stuff. So that is why some clubs now, and I've seen quite a few um, and I know some people are actually in these positions, solely there to focus on set plays. With up to 40% of goals actually coming from set plays, it is clearly an area that clubs will want to start focusing more attention on. A friend of mine who used to actually be a first team analyst, so that was his role before, has now transitioned into this position of a first team coach. You know, I've spoken to him about it and it sounds really, really interesting. Just sticking to my main sport of football, you obviously have corners, attacking free kicks, penalties and even throw-ins. This is a really undervalued area, I would say, and although not a lot of clubs are doing this, or at least not putting too much resources towards this, um, I think the ones that will, and the ones that currently are, will see some really great benefits. 
Next on the list is Academy Analyst. So it's pretty obvious what this one is all about. So you'll be working with the Academy teams to make sure they get everything they need when it comes to video analysis. You'll be filming, coding, prepping for games and delivering presentations. In the older age groups, it isn't that too dissimilar from the role of a first team analyst, but you obviously you do have to remember, which we have spoken about in previous videos, is obviously the focus in an academy is also obviously on development rather than just winning. Usually there is a head of academy analysis and then there'll be a number of other different academy analysts too. So you could have a, a single age group for yourself or you might be overseeing a number of, of different age groups. As you go down towards the younger ones, obviously the analysis is probably done less frequent just again because of manpower. So a lot of the younger age groups, so the under nines, under tens, are often filmed on a Sunday morning, sometimes by, by interns and students. Okay, so another role you can do within analysis is to be a recruitment analyst. I did this for a short time when I was at Brighton and to be honest, I really, really enjoyed it. So in this role, you're working more with the scouting department and the, you know, obviously the recruitment department bringing players into the club, but you still use a lot of the same kind of skills when it comes to analysis. You'll be watching games from all over the world to pick out certain players. You'll have to research leagues, different squads, and look at stats and different metrics to find the, the perfect players that will fit right into your current squad. You get to watch a lot of football in this role and you learn a lot about different leagues. So if you are into research, because it does involve a lot of research, if you are into that kind of thing and you enjoy that, then this could be a great job for you. Next is probably one that is slightly less common, so I will admit that I know a little bit less about this, but I have seen it advertised by a couple of clubs in the last sort of six to 12 months. So this is the training analyst. So obviously elite teams are training a lot, obviously they're full-time full -time athletes, and that training is being done by high level coaches. And so it's often what teams will actually require an analyst to be able to work with those coaches and ensure everything is done with regards to training. I would presume this role included filming and managing the footage of the training and working closely with the coaches. This may also link to sports science and GPS, so in terms of wearables and things like that. So that is something that I've included as a separate position. With the rise of these GPS devices and wearables, this has allowed for jobs to be created in football clubs that have to manage and work with the data that these items produce. These pieces of kit will produce loads and loads of different data points, all of which is pretty useless unless you have someone in the club that knows what they're doing. Again, this job is more of a sports science role, but it is you know, linked within sports analysis. This role would involve working with and spending time with the coaches, obviously the sports science staff, and also the fitness guys as well. So you'll have a real sort of mix um, of different disciplines with this role. Okay, so moving on, and another data type role that we're starting to see a lot more of within football clubs at least, is that of a data scientist or a data analyst. Now this role does require a different set of skills that you might not pick up with your undergraduate degree, obviously depending on what course you do. And for that reason, you know, I've seen people get these kind of positions that don't necessarily come from a sporting background. You know, so if you've done a degree in something that's obviously linked with data and numbers um, in terms of data science, mathematics, etc., um, you know, and you've got an interest and a bit of a knowledge in sport, then you could fit into one of these positions. If you do take an interest in data analysis when you dip your toe in, you know, there's going to be loads of online courses and, and sort of resources out there in terms of communities that you can really use to actually hone your skills. I actually have a whole new video coming soon which is dedicated to exactly how you can get started in data analysis. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss that one. Finally, I will say that some of the roles that I've mentioned can be done on freelance style contracts. I know people that specialize in set plays, for example, and they work almost like a consultant to a number of different clubs. This is also the case for people that work within data who specialize with specific leagues or you know certain countries so there are plenty of different opportunities out there for you to explore okay so i hope this video has been useful so if you work in a position within analysis that i haven't mentioned leave a comment below so we can show some love to that position too thanks again for watching and have a great day